gimmicks. Yeah. No gimmicks, taking over, no limits. Motivation, the truth inside everything you are hearing. For in live, know you feel it. Wrestling is everything that we will know with special meaning. We on in live with no gimmicks. Y'all were just listening to our new official theme song for the No Gimmicks podcast performed by Moneezy. What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Todd Smith here once again, alongside my tag team partner, Dale Clifford, out there in Fernley, Nevada. Welcome to yet another episode of the No Gimmicks podcast broadcasting on the 3 and Out Radio Network. Dale, what's good, my man? What is up? So we're kicking it official with an actual theme song, so that is very cool. And uh, who better than... Um, to uh, start off with this very uh, new uh, theme song with the guy that created it. So, yes, sir. Joining us on the No Gimmicks podcast this week, we have got the theme song king, Moneezy. What's good, brother? Hey, man. How you guys doing, man? I am so, so blessed to be here on the No Gimmicks podcast. I've been waiting for this interview for a little minute. Um, you know, we've been connecting through the wilds, Todd, and I, I'm glad to be on here, man. I love this. I love this, this podcast and what you guys are doing, man. I'm a big fan. Thank you, man. We're, we're glad to have you as well. Yeah, it took us a while to connect, man, but we finally made this thing happen. So um, first and foremost, we want to check up on you, man. Update us and our viewers on your health condition. We know you kind of had some setbacks recently, so tell us what's going on with you. Yeah, man. Um, first, thank you for your concerns, man. All the prayers and all the comments and all the messages, I definitely appreciate it. Um, I had what they called a, a, a TIA, minor stroke, um, hmm. on my right side. Uh, it happened about two weeks ago. Um, I was in my room about to go to sleep and, uh, my blood pressure started getting a little high and it, it, it naturally ran in my family, but I wasn't taking good care of it for these past six months to a year. So, um, you know, I had a TIA stroke. I felt my right side getting kind of weak and I was in the hospital for six days. Oh, wow. um, I am currently on like medications now and things like that to help level up my blood levels. Luckily, this whole week, my blood pressure has been normal, a normal 120 over 80, 125 over 85, you know, in, in that range for this week. Um, I'm on certain medications, and uh, it was the scariest thing I've ever been through in my life, man. Um, wow. Feeling weakness on one side and mm -hmm. admitting myself to the hospital. I tried to drive to the hospital, but I couldn't get there because I was like, I'm not going to do this. Yeah. So I called the ER. I parked my car, and I... um. I went to the hospital, man. So I, I was in there for five days. I previously stayed, and I'm, I'm currently in a state of recovery. It's been two weeks. Okay. I've already lost. I've already lost twelve pounds. I was two seventy one, and um, the hospital. Now I'm two fifty nine already. Wow. Whew. Amen. You give us all a scare, you know, when that happens. So we are very glad to see that you're um, that you're recovering and that everything is kind of going in a positive direction, man. So glad to all. And all those positive vibes which were sent your way have helped, man. So, uh, Dale, what you got from on easy? So, obviously, uh, you uh, what you do is record music. So, we just kind of wanted to let, um, ask is like, how long have you been recording music and uh, what kind of inspired you to get into the wrestling theme? Uh, so side of it, gotcha, man. Uh, great question. I, um, I've been making music, I'm 30 years old, so I've been making music since I was 15, 14, 15 years old, a sophomore in high school. Um, uh, about 14, I started, and, um, you know, uh, about three years ago, I was watching um, CM Punk versus The Rock on, um, I believe, I don't know if it was Royal Rumble, Elimination Chamber, I forgot which pay-per-view, and then The Shield debuted, and that's when The Shield debuted, and I saw those guys on TV, and I was like, man, I'm going to write a song about Roman Reigns, so I randomly wrote a song, this is when he first broke out and was just uh, about to break up from The Shield. This is when it, The Shield was just about to break up. I made the song a few months before the breakup. So uh, around the time, uh, around that time, I started challenging myself to say, can I write a song about a wrestler and mm -hmm. make it, you know, and, and see what I could do. And I randomly just put it out online and it got a lot of great feedback um, over these three years. Uh, it just It just touched over a million social media plays views that if you add everything together so that is that is humbling for somebody who's you know just doing this independently um it's not all about the numbers but that just great feedback you know of over the years of what everybody's done uh clicking on it so um 
you know, and then I randomly was like, you know what, I'm going to do this for guys in the independence. I'm going to see how this works out. So I hit up my man, Drolix. Shout out to Drolix, who uh, wrestles for MCW right now. Uh, Maryland Championship Wrestling. Check them out. And um, I just made it for him. And I said, you know, I'm going to try to make this a business. I'm going to try to make this a business where if you're, I don't, you know, if you're a wrestler, if you're, um, if you have a, a podcast as, as you guys do uh, r- related to wrestling or anything like that, man, I'm not going to try to break anybody's legs on the music financially. I'm, I'm just going to you know, show love and make music for my fellow wrestling fans. I'm a fan myself. So that's how, that's how they originated. Cool. Real cool, man. So now as we know, um, your name is actually Antoine Lewis. So what makes you decide to come up with the moniker of Mon Easy? Wow. Good question. No, I don't get asked this much. This is a good question here. Um, okay. So I'm gonna start from the very beginning. I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make a movie, uh, a script. So my, my original rap name was the message. Um, for years, it was just the message. There's a lot of people named the message. This is during the MySpace days and stuff. So I obviously every rapper in the world at a period of time wanted to be Scarface. So I put Montana at the end. So it was message Montana for a long time. Mm-hmm. Then I shortened it to a Montezzi just to switch it, just to add a different twist to the name. And it stuck. It was weird. Like Montana, instead of just being Montana, I'm just gonna be Montezzi. Oh. And um, it just stuck. I don't. It doesn't. It wasn't a weird acronym or anything. It didn't really mean anything special at the time. But I just. It's just basically an acronym for Montana. Just a nickname for Montana, basically. Okay, so if you decide to switch it up and go the gangster rap route, you could go like to Mont Hard or something like that. Then. <laughs> 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 All right, man. So Dale, what you got for Mont Easy? So obviously, as we began the show, uh. We debuted the new theme song that you created for us, and we just kind of wanted to know a little bit uh, about what went into the creative process for you to uh, come up with our song. Um, first of all, thank you guys for playing that, man, the networking. And um, I'm going to listen to this back when you guys put it out live and listen to it uh, through the podcast, through my speakers. But, um, you know, the process of you guys' records, I wanted to be able to speak for both of you guys mm-hmm. in a way of, you know, if I was... A, a, if I had my own podcast, how would I want to be able to speak with the No Gimmicks name? So I really didn't write it from a very aggressive standpoint. I wrote it from more of a more of a let me let me talk to you standpoint. Like let me sit down and have this conversation with you standpoint. I didn't want to be too aggressive, mm-hmm. and I didn't want to sound too soft either. I wanted to give it that sound. So when you guys heard it, and when the fans heard it, they okay. These guys are gonna come in. They're gonna kick some ass on this podcast. It's not. It gives you some energy. It gives you that feeling. I don't cuss on my music. I don't cuss on my music at all. So, you know, I wanted to give you guys that 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 hitting feeling. Like when as soon as you hear the music, the intro into the music, and you hear me say no gimmicks, it's like, oh crap, here we go. Uh-huh. So, that's what I wanted to give you guys on that record. And I hope I executed that for you guys. Yes, yes, you did, man. We were both very pleased with how it came out. We kind of like the whole, you know, rap rock vibe that you had going there you know when Dale and I were kind of discussing back and forth what exactly we were looking for what our vision was for that and when we listened to it we were both very pleased with how it turned out man so great job out of you by that by doing that for us man right one quick thing one quick thing to add to it is like I noticed with wrestling like I I, first thing I thought is like I have to be diverse there's different cultures that are wrestling fans there's different people that like different things and if I'm gonna do hip-hop I've been I was a big fan of Run DMC my whole life so You know, rock this way, rock, rock box, king of rock. Mm-hmm. So I studied the whole rap rock type thing. So that's why that's my favorite kind of stuff to do. When you said you wanted that, I said, okay, that's my bread and butter. I I love doing the rock and rap because I could do it with live bands, you know. Okay, cool, cool. So now let's talk about another theme song which you created recently for our dude, a uh, one Mr. Shane Strickland. Um, the track is called Swerve. Kind of tell us a little bit about that, man. What you got going on with that? Um, I w- actually, I wrote your theme song shortly after I finished his, okay. um, that song took me maybe five months and that doesn't, you know, I never had, it never takes me that long, but he had so many things he wanted in the song. Shout out to, um, Zygyros as well for on the, the female on the song. Okay. Um, the whole process of the song for him, he had a vision of what he wanted. He likes the Shaka Khan entrance and he still does that for different promotions, but for like CZW and Defy in, a, in Seattle and um, 
in Pennsylvania, he wanted to have a different look for different places where he was at. So some places he does the Shaka Khan thing still, and in some places he wanted a, a new theme song. So he gave me his exact vision. So he wanted a singer. He wanted it to sound more of a darker, kind of darker, but a hyper song. So me and my producers worked on some type of Dizzy Beats. And it took me about five months, dude. This is the first time I actually hit up other rappers to oh, wow. help me with a song. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, to co-write, to co-write co the song. I wrote I wrote about, if there's 32 bars in a song, I wrote 28 of them. And I'll just put it out there. Like, I love co-writing with other artists sometimes. That was the first time in years I had to do that and get other artists' advice, get other producers' advice. And then when I sent it to them, it was a knockout from there, man. Cool, man. Well, hey, the five months was worth it, man, as you put into it, because that track turned out real ill. Say, so, Dale, what you got next from Mont Easy? So we, uh, we've covered uh, two uh, wrestlers that you've uh, done as well as ours. Who are uh, a couple other uh, wrestlers that you want uh, a spotlight that you've uh, done themes for? Oh, sure, man. Um, I'm working on something for the new up and coming guy, Jason Cade. Um, Jason Cade, uh, PWX, CZW. Uh, I've done something for ACH, uh, his Evolve theme. Okay. Um, I did ACH. I did uh anybody familiar with um Caleb Conley? He's on TNA right now. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I I did a uh, revolt for him and Zane Riley, their tag team. Um I've done a lot of music for a lot of people, man. I did something for uh, Camilla Kane. I did um uh, me and um Anno Domino uh co uh, co worked on that one. Uh there's a lot of people, man. Um, like I said, Drolix, I mean Derek Green, Napalm Bomb, guys who are on the come up. I've made music for a lot of those guys. Those are notable people too. Um, I'm actually, I actually put first bid in to do Tennille Dashwood's theme when she first debuts. Emma. So I don't know if it's gonna happen. Uh, at mm -hmm. least me and my producers can produce it. I don't think she, we're not going to hip hop route with that, but I definitely put first bid in. So who knows? Who knows what'll happen with that? But yeah, those are some of the notable names, man, that I've made themes for. That'd be real cool, man, if you get something going for her. Well, I guess the artist formerly known as Emma because she won't be taking that name to the indie scene with her. But hey, so you mentioned Evolve. Um, how did your relationship with them come to be? Evolve. Um, well, uh, Evolve, Trevor Adams, who is the, uh, he calls himself the ambassador, really. He's the boss man. He's the guy under Gabe Sapolsky mm -hmm. that does a lot of the booking and commentary. He's the utility guy. He's a boss guy. Uh, one of the boss guys there, and he um, and me developed a friendship um, about two years ago. I made some um, some theme music for him through a recommendation, so he hit me up for some artists to do stuff for, and ever since then, these past three years, we've been friends, like Evolve. Any Evolve show you go to, if it's a big, like if it's out of state and not Florida, the first 50 people usually get a free Montezzi CD. Oh, okay. Um, uh, I'm going to start going to flash drives because flash drive seems the way to go now, but I'm still going to do CDs as well for people who still have those in their car. Yeah. And um, if you're going to an Evolve show in Boston, New York, uh, Connecticut, when they show up there again, um, you're definitely going to, if you're one of the first 50 people, you'll be able to get a free CD. So uh, my relationship with them has really, really been strong, man. And I'm, um, I'm looking forward to doing more stuff for them in the future. Yeah, definitely give me a heads up, bro, when they head out here, if you wind up heading out here with them to to, uh, to CT. It, it, I definitely will, bro. Make sure you're on the guest list, too, bro. Hey, hey, I'm all for that, man. That'd be sick. I got you, bro. All right, Dale, what you got next for Moneezy? Yeah, I was going to say, uh, just hitting on the uh, flash drive thing with the computer that I have now is like giving me a CD would basically just become a like a coaster because I don't have a CD drive in this computer, so I would need a USB flash drive now if I was to get one. <laughs> right, right. That's the way. That's the way the industry is turned, man. The industry is turned from the CDs and stuff like that. The pass A CDs, the vinyl. Who likes to connect vinyls? Um, the flash drives and emails the way to go, man. Emailing people is the way to go. I'm gonna start just doing like business cards with mm -hmm. like free email blasts, and if you sign up to the email, and I'll send the email out, you get the records exclusively, maybe a week or two before. Um, mm -hmm. If the, the CD thing was really about 10, 15 years ago, but you know, when you when it's, it's almost like when you're on a budget, it kind of fits because maybe out of those 50 people, maybe four or five might have a CD player. Uh -huh. But usually with the flash drives or with the email blast, if you set emails and you have people sign up, that's usually the easiest way to go because everybody's on the email every day. Yes, that's the wave of the future. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about sharpshooter funding. 
Uh, shout out to Paul Pritchard, man. Sharpshooter Funding is a company I do advertising for. Um, Paul and Bret Hart are obviously the uh, the owner and uh, and um, what Bret Hart likes to call himself the commissioner of Sharpshooter Funding. Um, shout out to Paul. He uh, he got me on the roster. He sees you know he sees what I do and he knows I can work the floor to market. Grab some shirts and hand them out to the guys. I put them some theme song King shirts. You can get right now if you DM me. And um, you know he he'll have. He'll have me go out to certain places and I'll hand out some shirts, I'll take pictures with the people, do some marketing. And uh, I think he sees value in what I do when I see value in what he does. So mm -hmm. it's really just a partnership. It's a working partnership. And sometimes, you know, he'll he'll send me out certain places and I'll uh, I'll just get grab a booth sometimes and just network for him. So I'm, I'm networking my stuff along with Sharpshooter Funding. OK. So now earlier on in the interview, you have mentioned that you like, you know, kind of like the mixture between hip hop and rock. Let's just say for a day, you couldn't listen to either one of them and you had to choose a different genre of music besides hip hop or rock to listen to. What would you listen to? Uh, the traditional thing would be R&B. But if I had to, if I had to switch and go somewhere else and it couldn't be nothing rap, R&B or rock related. I'm not going to lie, man. Some of that country don't be so bad, man. Yeah. OK. Some of it, some of it don't be so bad. You know, a lot of people's like, yo, a lot of us and country artists are saying the same thing in different neighborhoods. Like yep. we're sitting outside with a beer, hanging with our friends and that's, and you know, we might see a little girl with short shorts on and that's it. Yeah. But it ain't yeah. that bad, man. It ain't you know, that bad. You know, you know with little Toby Keith. <laughs> yeah, man, hey, I got a little, little Toby Keith. I got a little, um, uh, what's that guy's name? I forgot. I forgot. His name. He's a young dude. He was married. Oh, man, I forgot his name. I'm sorry. I'm not a, a country aficionado, but there's a couple young guys, man, that are really, really good. And I think they, they make solid music. I like, uh, what's his name? I know his name. Darius Rucker. I like him yeah, a lot, man. Don't just mention Hootie. Yeah, Dar yeah, Darius Rucker from Hootie and the Blowfish. He switched into the country genre. So yeah. that's where the money's at, man. That's where the money's at. Yes, sir. You got to be diverse, man, in the music industry, just like in the pro wrestling industry. So, Dale, what else you got from Uneasy? So, what are uh, so, uh, some of your big uh, career goals when it comes to uh, the wrestling industry? Good question. I have a, I'm going to give you guys an exclusive. I don't tell many people, but okay. the thing I want to do, and um, I just need like a couple of minutes to let you guys know the plan. I'm letting all the fans know the plan of what I plan on doing. I feel like theme song music has not been professed in wrestling as it needs to be. I feel like there could be more attention on the importance of theme songs to wrestlers. I think people remember them like you remember a Stone Cold song, you remember Undertaker song, but I feel like the WWE included could do more in promoting not only singles, but how they are made. I would, I think fans would love to get the artist, Jim Johnston, whoever did the vocals on these songs, Mm -hmm. the wrestler themselves all in one room and just do like a a segment and maybe like a WWE network show talking about how these songs were created and from the beginning from scratch mm -hmm. you see things sometimes they barely do it for a minute or so but I want like a, a documentary WWE has yet to put out a document the greatest theme songs of all time and go behind the scenes and show the artists recording them in the studio when the artists bring the artists inside the studio to get their first reactions of like wow this is it and putting all those together and how important the themes are to their careers. They do it once in a while, but not to the extent. One day I want to be able, my main goal with the WWE or in the independence is to really sit down with Triple H and let him know my ideas of what I want to do. Okay. Because I think I, I've written down ideas for the past three years that would be great. Outside of that, my goal, man, is to really, my career goal is to really want to be one of the best theme song makers in independent wrestling history. That's really one of my goals. Mm -hmm. And and I want to I want to be able to not only make music for everyone but contribute. There's a lot of themes out there that my voice is not on, but I've helped contribute in back ways to help the song. I'm not trying to be on every record. I'm not trying to perform at every rap uh, wrestling show. I don't have to do that, but I just want to be able to be one of the best and show people that you know what. Not only is this guy look out for me, not only financially or emotionally, but he. He made a great record. He made a great record for me, and he's a good dude. And I want wrestling fans to know that I'm just a musician that's a fan like you guys, and that's it. Hey, so you made a good point. You know, that's something that we had in the late 80s and the early 90s in WWF in particular. You had the wrestlers actually 
sing their theme songs. Like we saw that with the Heartbreak Kick, Shawn Michaels. We saw that with um, I want to say who was it? Was it um, the Mounties? I believe it was, or the Quebecers. The tag team. With the Quebecers, Jonathan. yeah, the Quebecers. Yeah, they yeah. sung their theme songs. I thought that was kind of cool when they actually kind of got them involved in it. You know, but in regards to your goals and whatnot, man, hey, keep on doing what you're doing. You know, you're well on your way. Hey, so um, my question I have for you is, if you could change anything about indie wrestling or how people perceive pro wrestling in general, what would you change and why? I think that we have to get to a point where we understand that when it comes to pro wrestling, that it's like a choreographed movie. And I think that sometimes that people will put unfair stigmas on wrestling in general that they don't put a pl apply to everyday life. Like if I go to a Batman movie, it is very rare that I expect Batman to die in a movie, but I still go to watch it. You know, I still go to understand, hey, Batman might go through some serious adversity, but he's going to win. He might not be my favorite character. Usually the Joker is when the Joker's in the movies. But at the same time, I understand when I buy a ticket, expecting Batman to prevail. How he prevails, that's another story. With wrestling, you don't know who's going to win a lot of times, unless, you know, sometimes you do. But mm -hmm. you don't know who's going to win sometimes. And you just, I think fans have to enjoy it. I mean, I think we've all become a little bit too cynical because we see it so often. There's so much of it. We don't get a chance to enjoy. I miss the days where it was just Raw, SmackDown, and that was really it. Or WWF superstars back in the day and Raw. You know what I'm saying? Like back in the early 90s when we had very limited, you know, um, very limited access and fans were able to just enjoy it. That's the one thing I think we could change is some of us as fans can just enjoy it for what it is. Because, you know, we know so much that's really tough. But that's the one thing I would say out of side of just, you know, understanding it for what it is and not being so critical of what these guys do and what we do in the wrestling business as well. All right. All right. Fair enough. Hey, so, uh, Dale, what you got next from Mod Easy? So if you could be a professional wrestler, uh, what would uh, be your in-ring style, if your your finisher and your persona? My persona would probably, my in-ring style would probably be like one of the ground guys, power guys. I'm not that fast. So I'd have to, mm -hmm. I'd have to just have a good, I'd have to, you know, have the ground attack, maybe a powerhouse style. Um, my persona would probably just be, if I could put my picture on it, my name with my personality and who I am, I'd probably lean towards being a manager. But if I had to wrestle, I would probably just do like the basic strong style stuff. Um, I would like, I'll be more of a serious kind of dude, even though that's not who I am as a person. But I know that when I go out there and those lights are on, I'm pretty damn serious and I'm really focused. So that's probably what I would do. I'd be more of a, a more serious character with you know that that can switch it up at time more of a utility guy like a jericho guy okay all right so yeah so you'd be kind of versatile and be able to do a little bit of everything then right right okay and so if you could go back in time man if time travel was possible just imagine that for a second and you can give advice to your younger self um like when you were starting you know like out with this um this venture into the pro wrestling business and creating theme songs and whatnot what advice would you give to yourself in life or business in general or anything? Life, business, anything, pretty much. Uh, save your money, one. Mm -hmm. Two, uh, don't, don't, you know, this is just my opinion. If I can go for myself, you know, don't, don't get yourself in a relationship too serious when you're young. <laughs> and, and, uh, because, <laughs> you know, you're still learning this. That's a whole other story. I'm just speaking uh -huh. from a man perspective. That's different and conversation three, at a different time. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And three is don't be afraid to go through trials and tribulations to know who you are as a person and understand that roadblocks are going to happen. Don't put so much pressure on yourself and try to be older or expect more than what you're honestly capable of at that point. Life experience is a lot of times the best teacher. So mm -hmm. just live life, you know, save your money. Be careful who you take seriously when you're in a relationship mm -hmm. and Really, you know, keep it, keep an ear open. Keep more. I was a very stubborn young kid. I was very stubborn. I had my mind on what I wanted to do, which is good and bad. But uh -huh. keep your ears open. Don't be afraid to be told no, and and don't be afraid of the word no. And understand that no just means their opinion. It doesn't mean that it's facts. Mm -hmm. And 
treat everybody the way you want to be treated. That's something I've always done, but I'm just saying treat everybody you want to be treated, save your money, and you know, always enjoy, always take care of yourself and enjoy life because you never you never know in this world. So treat everybody the way you want to be treated and enjoy life. All right, sounds good, man. Now, speaking of um, you know, being in tune with yourself and um who you resemble, Dale, you got a question for uh from Uneasy here? <laughs> yeah, it's like I I saw that you had mentioned this a little bit earlier about how you keep uh, getting uh, mistaken for uh, Eric Sermon. So we were just kind of curious. Is like, have you reached out to him a little bit? Uh, what this uh, the sense of how how uh, you guys look a lot alike? And let me jump in here real quick. Let me make this clear because I'm always comparing people and saying who people look like, and I never get a cosign from Dale. Okay. Me, Dale, my buddy Matt, who I work with at ESP, and we're always doing this thing, like who somebody looks like, and they never co-sign. But this one, you said that there were 200 people who I have no connection to whatsoever who also said the same, that you look like Eric Sermon from EPMD. Am I not correct here, Moneezy? You are absolutely correct. I, um, I, I am called the young Eric Sermon without the green eyes. Okay. And a beard, because he doesn't wear a beard, and I have a beard. So... Um, honestly, that's funny because that's one of my musical inspirations. I never looked, I never saw it though. I always got called Emmett Smith when I was a kid or Marshall Falk, one of the two. I can see Marshall Falk. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I got called Marshall Falk a lot when I was a kid. And, um, cause my head is big, you know what I'm saying? My head's big. <laughs> but, but, uh, yeah, man, uh, Eric Sermon, man, is one of my musical inspirations. I never really saw it until somebody told me like a couple years ago. But um, that's great to be compared to, you know, a lookalike of one of the greatest producers and rappers of all time. I got I got a lot of his music, a lot of his albums, a lot of EMP, EPMD albums. And I was listening to Eric Sermon like I listen to Nas or Tupac. That's one of my that's in my top 10 of all time. So I'm flattered to get that. Have I reached out to him? No, I would like to, though. And maybe we could do some business on something. Hey. And, you know, if, if they ever do an EPMD movie. Uh -huh. I make sure uh -huh. you guys get it, get your names on the credits and get some money with me. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes, sir. Hey, and business was always in those dudes' titles, man. Mind your business, strictly business, out of business. Like all their albums always had that word business somewhere in the title. So yes, how'd you go? Mind your business. Mind, mind your business. Isn't that how it used to go? Back in the day? That's a classic. That's a classic, man. I got I got all those CDs, man. I got okay. strictly business. Uh, Jane Gold Digger, Richter Scale, The Joint. Wow. A lot of them, man. I can name a lot of EPMD songs, man. Right. So yeah, what you say at all that? We got to talk more about some hip hop, man, once this conversation is over here. But hey, it's getting back to you here and your focus and what you have coming up. What are your goals for 2018? What's on the horizon for you? Good question, man. 2018, I'm focused on making a comeback. Um, I was supposed to go to Wrestle Cade this year, November, perform in front of 4,000 people. I, I made the, I made the conscious decision with my health not to do it, okay. not to push myself so hard. I'm two weeks out of the hospital. I told the promoter, um, Brian Hawks, I can't do it. He said, next year, man, come back in better shape, better shape mentally. Come out and perform. I really, that would have been the biggest show of my life. Um, kind of bummed, but I uh, know my health is more important. I'd be here for my kids and my family and my wife and stuff. So. Sure. Uh, but you know, man, 2018, man, I'm coming back. I'm coming back April or a little bit before April. If defy wrestling, uh, and, and Shane Strickland and myself get that done. I might be out at the early of the year, January, February, but, uh, my booking, my confirmed booking right now is to come back April, 2018 in new Orleans. I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be performing at a lot of the shows and gigs that are going on out there. Um, I'm booked right now. My return show so far. It's Pancakes and Power Drivers, April 7th, uh, Saturday morning. Um, I can't wait to be there April 7th that morning. Pancakes and Power Drivers, Wrestling Revolver. Shout out to Sammy Callahan for the booking. Um, I'm going to be there. Uh, I'm going to be performing maybe twice, maybe for Shane and ACH. That's the way it's looking. Cool. So, um, yeah, man, April 2018, I'm looking to come back. And I'm looking to do things bigger, man. I'm going to still be pushing my Swerve single. And, you know, work on doing bigger and better things. Work a little bit outside of just the music and get, you know, get involved in different things with media. Maybe do some interviews with some people out, you know, maybe after an Evolve show or something like that. I don't know. But I just want to keep pushing the theme song, King Brand. I got to get some shirts out to both of you guys. And, right. um, cool. you know, man, uh, just keep, keep pushing. Keep pushing. 2018 is going to be the year of redemption. That's what I'm calling it. 
Oh, hey, that all sounds great and everything, man. But I just kept on hearing the word pancakes. Mmm, pancakes. I love me some pancakes, man. I had pancakes this morning, man. <laughs> what kind? Homemade? Did you uh, make regular? I, I made regular, man. I, with this health stuff, man, I'm not doing anything crazy. Smart man. All right, so hey, I'm gonna go ahead and toss it to Dale, and Dale's gonna help us wrap this thing on up now. Well, obviously, you kind of covered a little bit of where you're um, headed um, as we go forward. So, give us a little bit of uh, where our viewers can uh, find you on social media. Sure, man. Um, you can find me at Montezzi Moore on Instagram and Twitter. SoundCloud uh, for all the music, Montezzi MTL or Montezzi have two different play pages with different theme songs on there for the, for the content. Um, you guys can book me for all bookings, wrestling. You can contact me at more to life ENT at gmail.com. You can DM me for all business acquaintances as well. Uh, all business only. Some of you wrestling fans are crazy, but <laughs> hit me up. Hit me up at um uh you know on the DMs on Twitter. Uh, I'll follow back. I follow people back. If you're a good, good, nice person, a great fan, uh you know, I'll follow back. You know, I'll follow you back. So hit me up on all that for all bookings and for social media to hit me up. I'll respond to everybody. Hey, one thing is for sure, we can sit up here and talk with the theme song King Mon Easy all night long. But unfortunately, we have come to the end of this episode of No Gimmers Podcast. So thank you for tuning in. For our interview with Mon Easy, the theme song king. Brother, it's been good having you. Thank you, guys. I love the show. Keep pushing. Shane, I'm calling you out. Come on the show. I hit you up twice, bro. You my dog. Desmond, both of y'all. I know y'all busy, but come on the show and give my dog 30 minutes to an hour, all right? I appreciate y'all. Ditto what he just said. We are no gimmicks, no image, all wrestling all the time. Please subscribe, like, comment, and share our videos, and listen to the new theme song. No gimmicks. Yeah. No gimmicks, taking over, no limits. Motivation, the truth inside everything you will hear. Important live, know you feel it. Wrestling is everything that we will know with special meaning. We on it live with no gimmicks.